I'm Graham McGregor, Professor of Cardiovascular Medicine at the Wolfson Institute at Barts Hospital. I'm going to be talking about the importance of, of salt in, in uh, raising blood pressure. Now, the reason why we're interested in this is that blood pressure is the single biggest cause of death in the world because it's the major factor that causes strokes, heart attacks, heart failure, renal disease, and um, salt is the major factor that puts up blood pressure. Now, you as doctors or even as individuals on treatment may think that the important thing is to control high blood pressure. That's when the systolic's above 140. But in fact, the risk starts of systolic pressure against stroke at 115. That's 80% of the population in the UK. So we're nearly all of us are at risk from our blood pressure. Now, obviously, we're not going to treat all these people from 115 to 140 because the risk is low, much more exposed. So the number of strokes occurring are about the same in the two groups. That is the people with upper limit of normal blood pressure and those above. So we want to treat blood pressure and seek them out, but we also want to adopt population measures to lower blood pressure. And that's where salt comes in, because salt is the major factor that puts up blood pressure. Now, when you look at salt in the UK population, most of the salt we eat is already added by the food industry. About 80% comes from the food industry, only 15% is added by the consumer, and 5% is naturally present in the food. So we have a big problem, because Clearly, we need to get the industry to reduce it, but actually that's a very attractive problem because it's much easier to get the industry to reduce it than it is to persuade people to reduce their own salt intake, which requires a lot of knowledge. And what we've done in the UK is by talking to the industry and also a very good agency, the Food Standards Agency, was to come up with a plan in the early 2000s about how to reduce salt intake. And that was what we did was set targets for each food group. So bread is the biggest source of salt in the UK diet. And we set targets for that to be achieved in four years, cereals. There were in fact 86 categories of food. So it's a huge number to go through. And all of them had targets that the food industry had to achieve in four years. Then after two years, we then reset the targets with a further reduction down, and then you reset them again. So in other words, you're gradually screwing them down, getting more and more salt out, but actually each time it seems quite small. Now the beauty of that is that you probably won't have realized that every product you buy in the supermarket has been reduced in its salt concentration by around 30 to 40% without you even realizing. And you can go on buying the same products, your salt intake's fallen, blood pressure's fallen. And we've documented that. There has been a reduction in salt intake in the UK. There has been a fall in average population blood pressure. And this will cause around 9,000 stroke and heart attack deaths a year less. So see the benefits of that. Now that policy is ongoing. We've spread it out to the rest of the world. So most countries in the world now are either adopting a similar plan to the UK UK, or where salt is added by the consumer, public health campaigns. So for once, it's a big success story for the UK. We led the world on salt reduction. It's been copied all over the world. Um, and I think it's important that you get that message across to individuals and your patients, or if you're a patient with high blood pressure, because actually reducing your own salt intake is very effective as well. But this is a population reduction. So that's how we did it. Thank you.